Welcome to Heritage Trout Mapping on the Sierra Nevada Yellow-Legged Mountain Frog. It may come as a bit of a shock as it did to me when I first read that the Sierra Nevada backcountry was historically fishless. Prior to the stocking practices of the last 150 years or so, only one true aquatic vertebrate called these post-glacial waters home. And that aquatic vertebrate is the Sierra Nevada yellow-legged mountain frog. Today, we're going to hike into a fishless lake set aside for these amphibians, discuss the current and historic challenges they face, and cover a theory I think helps explain its place and value in the local ecology of the Sierra Nevada. But first, we're gonna stop and test out a special fly pattern I stumbled upon in a book by Ralph Cutter titled Fish Food. This pattern is a basic woolly bugger tied in colors to imitate the Sierra Nevada yellow-legged mountain frog in its pre-metamorphosis stage. To tie this, I use a standard beadhead woolly bugger recipe with the following material colors. A gold bead, gold ice Chanel body, gold thread wrapped with a black hackle and a black marabou tail. The hatch match idea behind this pattern is based on the fact that early introduced trout found themselves in a sort of all-you-can-eat buffet situation with only one main dish, yellow-legged mountain tadpoles. These tadpoles live multiple years before metamorphosis, where they spend summer months in the shallows feeding and winter months in deep water to escape the ice. Post metamorphosis, the frogs take another three to four years to reach reproductive maturity. This lake hosts a healthy population of eastern brook trout. This char subspecies is the most prolific self-sustaining fish occupying the Sierras due to its ability to reproduce in lake environments. After a few failed attempts with the tadpole pattern, I head back to shore to rethink my strategy. Upon reaching the shallows, I notice small clusters of midges and take note of the small mosquito-like insects flying around but not actually biting. This prompts me to tie on a size 22 smoke jumper, after which I am immediately rewarded on my first cast. Even though the first attempts with the tadpole pattern was unsuccessful, I'm not discouraged. It now has a permanent place in my fly box, if for nothing else than the story behind it. Whoa! Not much of a release shot there. <laughs> he was eager. After breaking this small puzzle, it's time to pack up and move on to the next lake for our first look at the Sierra Nevada yellow-legged mountain frog. The location of this lake was given to me by a local biologist with only one request, and that was to not catch or handle the frogs. The reason behind this request is due to the chytrid fungus which is now the biggest threat to the species. This fungus attacks the amphibian skin and affects its ability to breathe and osmoregulate. With the true vector of transmission unknown, I will attempt to hold back my natural childlike urge to catch one and settle for the slightly less satisfying digital capture on film. The Sierra Nevada yellow-legged mountain frog is a medium-sized frog. Males reach lengths up to 2.5 inches and females up to 3.5 inches. The frog skin is green or brown in color with distinctive yellow or orange markings on its legs and belly. I am left with a sense of awe walking the shoreline of this lake. It's like stepping into another world. Upon first descending the ridge line overlooking the lake, I first noticed large dark shapes in the shallows that had I not known, I would have assumed these shapes were fish. These tadpoles are seriously that big. 
After scanning the shoreline and witnessing motion in the form of a leap from land to water, my vision becomes acutely tuned to the frog's shape and movement, and I begin to see the plethora of amphibians present. The next thing I notice is the quantity and size of the aquatic insects. My impression of most backcountry lakes in the Sierra is that of an almost sterile-like beauty, where life is hard and food is scarce. But maybe this is what all lake environments were like above 6,000 foot in the Sierras prior to the introduction of trout. This leads me into the Sierra Predator Theory, which attempts to explain the lack of high-order predators like mink, marten, and wolverines with the decline of the Sierra Nevada yellow-legged frog population, as these frogs were most likely the main food source in the Sierras. It's a compelling theory and one we might want to consider to help convey the value of this frog's conservation. Fish are cool, but frogs are also cool. Like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you guys next time.